Okay, Houston, right, we've had a problem here. Mrs. Houston, say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Houston, we don't have a problem. Today we want to talk about something called the centripetal force. That means something going in a circle and what force is happening on it. In a previous video, we've said that the acceleration is towards the center, but let's, let's kind of talk that through. I've got right here a uh, object attached to a string, and I'm going to spin it. So as I spin it, there are forces going on as it spins around and around and around, moving in a circular motion, right? And so if you are drawing this, boom, like we've got a circle, right? And if it's at this very top at the peak, what's going on? Let's think about the forces that are present, or we want to think of, essentially draw a free body diagram. So if you think about it, that there is a force holding it down, and that's the tension of the rope. But if you think about it also, there is another force happening, and that there is also the weight of the object. The weight is going to be, oh, what's the weight? The weight is going to be, um, which is equal to the force, which is equal to mass times acceleration, which is the mass times 9.8. And so it is moving, that, 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 that is going down, and the force is always directed towards the center. So when something is moving in a circular motion, the force is towards the center. Just like we said in the last video, if I have circular motion, if I stop right here, the velocity is tangential, but the acceleration is always towards the center. So if the acceleration is towards the middle, then therefore the force is towards the middle. But you sometimes need to realize that there are many other forces that are playing a role in this equation, if you will. And this is interesting in that what if I were to have a car going through a curve on a road, right? So that's circular motion too. Now we're looking downward. So if I've got a car, this is a car, and it's traveling um, on the curve of a road, then it's accelerating towards the middle uh, of the road. But actually, if you think about it, from this perspective, and, it, and the velocity is running tangential, right? And if the car, to keep the car going on a circle, something must be holding it back. So if it's accelerating in this way, it should be just straight moving this way. So if it's accelerating backward, what's actually holding it to? Because if you were to like have a frictionless surface, so to speak, the car would keep going straight. That's why when you go around the corner, I mean, we're in Houston, so we don't see this very often, but if you're going on the corner on an icy street and it's super slick, your car will continue to keep going straight and it will crash into something and not good. And so that's why curves can be very dangerous in an icy road because they have a very, very low coefficient of static friction. But let's take a look at this situation. We're looking at it from the top. What if we looked at it from the side. So if I have a car, I'm trying to draw a car, okay. It's, it's a cart, but it's all right. If I have a car that's going around in a circle, if you think about it for a moment, there is a force downward, the weight force. Force up is the normal force, okay? And it is accelerating towards the center but what's actually happening is this is the frictional force. So it really is a function of the tires. What's actually keeping the car from going straight is the friction between the tires and the road. And it might seem weird that the frictional force is moving towards the center. The frictional force is towards the center of the circle because normally the normal force and the weight force are going to cancel out. And it's the frictional force that's going to hold the car on the road and keep it from spinning out. That's again another good reason why you want to have better tires. So again, not as important in Houston, but if you live up north and if you get bald tires, you get really old tires, they get bald as they the tread wears down. When you're on uh, snow and ice and stuff like that, then essentially the coefficient of friction gets down and then you're much more likely to spin out. So you needed to invest more money in tires when you live up north. Uh, otherwise, you've got a problem. So you see a car going around a corner. It's the frictional force between the tires and the road that holds it on to the road. All right. 
Another example, take a look at this video of a runner running around the track, right? And if you noticed, when, when the runner was going around the track, again, moving in a circular motion, right? But if you were to look at that runner, you saw on the runner, if I've got the runner, that's them running. But the reality is, is what did you notice? They're actually running at a bit of an angle, aren't they? As they're running around the corner, because their normal force is perpendicular. Their actual normal force is at this angle, right? Whatever that angle might be. But their weight force is down here, the force of their weight. Um, and they are leaning into that because their body is the net force. And this is also due, what? It's due to the friction between the, the rubber in their shoes and the track itself. So the friction is holding them as they run around the corner of the, uh, of the track. The fact that they're leaning shows that, that acceleration in this direction as they're actually accelerating as, as the runner goes around the bend. So centripetal force at some level is a relatively easy equation, but I want you to understand it from a free body diagram perspective. I mean, again, centripetal force, we've said this a minute ago or a video ago, I guess, it, this, the force C for centripetal is, you know, mv squared over r, but it's also important to know what the direction of the forces are because v squared over r is the centripetal acceleration. Um, and so a lot of the questions you're going to deal with are probably using this equation, but it's also important to understand the direction of the force is towards the center of the acceleration, and so is the direction of the force. And then typically what's holding things on, especially like in like a, a car problem or a runner problem, it's actually the friction between the, the tire or whatever it might be that's in contact with the ground and the ground. And if you reduce that friction, then we've got a problem. Uh, a frictionless world would be a very problematic because as you're going around that corner, you'll you'll go off. And, and maybe a better analogy here in Houston is um, if you get on a really wet road, a car can hydroplane. Hydroplane, you just ruin the coefficient of friction and the car can't hold, the, the tires can't hold the road. Uh, and that creates a problem. I don't know if you've noticed this here in Houston, but on the major freeways, I think I-10 in particular, I see it well, and I-290 where up where I live, have you ever noticed that there's these grooves in the uh, in the road? So if you were to look at the, the road, it's just, it's like etched with groove, 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 and these are indented. So if you were to look at the, the picture, these grooves are, are uh, you know, here's the road surface, but these grooves exist, you know, and they're maybe an inch or so um, uh, grooves. Why is that? Why did they put those there? It's for your safety, because what's happening is we get a lot of rain, and when it rains a lot, the if the road fills up with water, then now you have a hydroplaning situation and people then all kinds of things can happen, accidents. But what it is, it creates a channel. It's like a little place for the river of the water to flow down and get away from the road so you don't have standing water on the road so that your road doesn't cause the lower coefficient of friction, which would cause cars to, the tires would not stay in contact with the concrete, and then boom, you've got accidents and, you know, yeah, we don't want accidents, so you don't want to get in accidents because they're no fun. And then let's do one last analogy. Now, you've done this before. You have been riding on a car and you go over a hill. Now, over a hill, like a bump. And when the engineers design a hill, right? So you've got a car, you go here, and then there's a hill like this. All right, when they're designing a road, I'm overemphasizing it. But when you are in a car and you're going up a road, if they're designing the car, the road right, they actually want to make this very much a, a nice, perfect part of a circle. Because let's think about the car at the top of the road. Now, if you think about it, if you are on a curve, what is the direction of the acceleration? Downward, right? Because it's going to force the car down. Because you, what you don't want, maybe you should think about that, you don't want the car <laughs> launching off into space. That's bad. So you want to have, so you've got a weight force down, but you've also, uh, uh, that weight force down is creating also the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration. So you've got the centripetal acceleration and the weight force, and both those are keeping the car on the road. You don't want it to, you know, launch off into, you know, and that's going to create all kinds of problems for your suspension, probably an accident. And you want to have so that if they make this crown, if you will, nice and circular, 
the acceleration will be downward, not just because of gravity, but also because of centripetal acceleration. So your, your net force would be equal to the weight, you know, the 9.8 times the weight of the car, but also due to, you know, you'd say m times v squared over r. So you've got two forces pushing down to keep the car on the crest of the hill from launching off and doing like a evil Knievel jump off the off the road. And so that's that's why they design these things. Um, yeah, uh, the way they do. So Houston, centripetal forces. We don't have a problem. We'll see you in class.